views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Open University in our BronxNet studios at Lehman College. On this show, we keep you in the loop on current discussions in and around the community. I'm your host, Lizzie Dominguez, and we have an amazing show for you today, filled with talented guests, events, and much more. First up, are you a fan of jazz? Well, if you are, stay tuned because we'll tell you all about the New York Jazz Film Festival coming up. Then we'll take a look at the 11th annual Walk With Me event. And finally, we'll sit down with a talented singer, actor, and dancer who has been part of plays such as Joseph and many more. So stay tuned because all that and much more is heading your way here on Open University. Hello and welcome to Open University. I'm your host, Lizzie Dominguez. For the first time ever, there will be a festival dedicated to films with traditional jazz. Here to tell us more is Programming Committee Chair of the New York Jazz Film Festival, Elizabeth Simmons. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. My first question will be, how did the idea of the festival came upon? Because this is your first time doing this. Yes, yeah, the first time. The founder of the festival, uh, Gregory Royal, mm -hmm. he's a trombonist and he's a musician. He's been playing music since he was a child. Mm -hmm. um, he, we've been noticing that there isn't very much jazz being played in Harlem anymore. And mm -hmm. so the point of what we were trying to do was trying to bring back the, the, the performance of live jazz in Harlem and also to try to educate people about instrumental music. Because again, if you look at what's going on in the schools, the, the yeah. music, the funding for music education has decreased and there's not very much um, instrumental music played in, in the schools. The kids are not that familiar with instrumental totally. music at all. You know? They just figured it's something from the past. Like yeah, exactly. we were talking off air how it we think of jazz and we think that it's black and white story yes. most of it. Oh wow. What is your role in this film festival? So basically I am one of the people who is um, identifying the programs and putting the, um, you know, going through looking at screening the films, mm -hmm. eliminating um, films that didn't meet the criteria, mm -hmm. uh, selecting the films, and then organizing the, um, the program. Okay. Let's talk about the selection process. Uh, how do you curate what films are going to be on? Right. So we were looking for films that had a jazz theme, you know, either like the, the main character was a jazz musician, uh, there was a lot of jazz being played throughout the film, um, and there was um, some kind of musical aspect to the film as mm -hmm. well. Okay. And how many films in the end are going to be presented at the festival? So we screened <laughs> over 400 films. Wow. I know exactly. How <laughs> many of you were they evaluating this 400 films? Oh, there was like about like, uh, eight of us, but we wow. all had to see everything, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, and exactly. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what to put and stuff. Yeah. Right. And, you know, maybe we didn't agree. Yeah. So, but we all managed to narrow it down to 44 films. That's Wow, yeah. I bet it was a long process, but you made it through. <laughs> Surprisingly, it, it, we started it very early on. I want to say we started, I think it was back in like July. Mm. And so it was amazing. Like we opened up the, the without a box, the, the competition, and like we were flooded with entries. It was, we, who knew there was that many <laughs> jazz films out there? And is it mostly like independent filmmakers with uh, yeah. who use jazz as the theme? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's different sources. Like for instance, there uh, there's some documentaries about several jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. um, there was one about women in jazz, which is actually quite interesting. Um, so there was just a bunch of people. There was like yeah, there's a bunch of people just submitting their entries. Are all the entries? Were they all like from New York or were no, they No, actually beyond? this is, we should probably call ourselves International Film Festival oh, wow. because we've got entries from Greece, we've got entries from Australia, from Canada, wow. from Portugal, no all I'm sorry, Brazil, all over the world. That's, yeah. that's crazy. And for the first year, I bet that's yeah. a great accomplishment. Yeah. How did exactly did it come about for like, it w I know it came out like as an idea at yeah. first, but was the process like long to cr make it like a real thing or? It, you know, it was an idea and it just, it was like a snowball, just snowballed and just, you know, quickly became big. Yeah. I mean, the idea yeah. was, let's put that at this film festival, let's do it. So we opened up an, uh, you know, an, um, mm -hmm. an account through Without a Box, and we put out the word that we're doing this film festival. And people just normally, they, you know, peop um, filmmakers know where to go to look for festivals. So we were flooded with entries, you know what I mean? So we, we got the films, got the films, and we started, you know, um, mm -hmm. promoting our, our project. 
Um, right now, we're in the final stages of prep. It's going to be this weekend. Oh. So it was. It, it so happened very, very soon. Very yeah, exciting. It happened yeah. very quickly. It's amazing how quickly these things can happen. Wow. What do you, would you say is the importance of keeping jazz alive? <sighs> jazz is an American art form. Mm -hmm. It's probably the one of the original American musical art forms. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's unique to this country. Um, it's music is important in anyone's, in children's, in anyone's education. You know, mm -hmm. you listen to music, it enlightens you, it, it makes you feel good, it touches you. Of music course, is the yeah. story of our lives, you know what I mean? And jazz is one of those key types of music that's just central to that. It's, it's integral to that. We can't let jazz die. And jazz is also like, is like, deeply woven into the history of, yeah. of New York City and Harlem. Especially you know. today, yeah. where kids don't normally think of jazz as a major genre. They think of it as, as basically dead. So <laughs> what would you say to people who think that jazz is dead? Jazz is not dead. Totally. <laughs> jazz is not <laughs> Just dead. Just with this, we but know. What we have to understand, though, is, isn't that, I'm sorry I didn't say this before, but the thing with jazz is jazz is actually musicians playing live instruments. Of course. And that, we're not seeing that very much anymore. We're seeing kids, you know, you've got these new types of music. You've got, you know, rap and other things, music like that, R&B. Yeah. And even with R&B, you're seeing people not really playing live instruments. Playing an instrument is, is just a good thing for a child growing up. Of it's course. a good skill to have. And with jazz, it's... It's the ability to be creative, mm -hmm. to let yourself loose, and to just be, you know, e explore and do all kinds of interesting things, you know? So it's, yeah. it's important. And um, is it dead? I don't think it's dead. You still find jazz, you know. In many places. In many yeah. places. But what's happening is that the image of jazz has kind of, has kind of, has not been, it's not been keeping up with yeah. the image of rappers. You see rappers in all different types of, of media. Mm -hmm. You don't see jazz musicians the same way. Jazz musicians were, you, you saw them in, in the films in the 40s and the 50s and 60s, yeah. but you don't, you don't see them anymore. You know, after, after Harry Connick Jr., you don't really see that many jazz musicians, you know, in, in movies or in anything else. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to put out there and say, hey, this isn't a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. This is a jazz musician. So that's basically what the festival is trying to accomplish yeah. then when it comes to, you know, proving people wrong that jazz is not dead. Basically. Jazz is not dead, yes. And the yeah. jazz musician is a hip cat still. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and what else will be offered in this film festival for the audience and, and stuff? Okay, so, you know, we'll, we'll have a bunch of different types of films. That we'll see, like, documentaries. We'll see some animated mm -hmm. shorts. Um, we'll have the filmmakers there, so the audience, you know, will be able to, to talk and interact with them. Um, we'll also have live musicians playing jazz oh, in between great. the screenings, you know, so you're actually so going to see like live performance. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of kids who probably never seen an adult play a live instrument, and, you know. So this will be, Likely, like, yeah, yeah this will be a very great event. And it's, there's something about listening to live music. It makes a difference than it just listening. It makes a difference, yeah. exactly. Uh, how can people participate? Okay, so um, we have uh, tickets still available. Um, it's a free event. Uh, oh they great, they can everyone go loves that. Exactly, <laughs> they can go to eventbrite.com and you know, see that. Um, the musicians, if there are any musicians out there, hey, come on down, bring your horn, play with us, or whatever instrument you have that's, that's portable. <laughs> Where can people find out more? Like, is there a website? Yes, there is a website. So the website is AmericanYouthSymphony.org. Okay. Um, and there'll be information. There'll be a, a, a link to see the lineup of shows, so you can pick which. Because there's different films. It's not the same films for each show. Okay. We're gonna have like eight screenings, so there's different films across that. We've got like features, and shorts, and music videos as well. Um, and we also are looking for this. We're looking for jazz jocks. We're looking for people. Um, who are very familiar or who are innovative. Okay. We're looking for them to, we're gonna start doing this live streaming thing, uh, programming in the spring. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for people to come and like curate shows and figure out ways to make the jazz musician interesting again. Oh. You know what I mean? Make him relevant again, I suppose, you okay. know? You know, so if you, you know, if you know any young producers that are willing to, um, who are willing to try something different, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And we're not talking like, oh, sitting down and interviewing them and say, hey, so when did you start playing music? No, we're talking about something like, you know, let's think outside of the normal practice of what we see people doing. Of let's course, try something yeah. different, you know? Right? Great. And this is happening again on the... Um, the 12th um, the twelfth and the 13th, Saturday and Sunday, this Saturday and this Sunday. Oh, perfect. Well, good luck with that. Thank and thank you, you so much. much for joining us on set. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're taking a quick break, but don't worry. We'll be right back with more Open University. Hi, I'm 
I'm David Lesh, legal correspondent to the Morning Show Open. If you have a legal question that you'd like me to answer, please send me an email at davidlesh at bronxet.org, and I will address it on our Ask Your Lawyer segment. From a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where the ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. If you want to stay in the know about the latest happenings in Espanol, check out Dialogo Abierto, Bronxnet's own Spanish show, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Channel 67. The latest in news, arts, culture, politics, and what's going on in your neighborhood. Dialogo Abierto, the best way to stay connected in Spanish. See you there. Te esperamos. Welcome back to Open University here on the beautiful campus of Lehman College. Hostos Community College held their 11th annual event, Walk With Me. Arlene Mukoko has the story. Close to 100 Hostos Community College students, some with darkened makeup, participated in the 11th annual Walk With Me event held each October in recognition of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It is very, very important uh, that we support each other and raise awareness is the, the first step. I am for the kids, so they, they see the parents and if they see something wrong, they could grow up with the same idea and keep on with that, with that issue. It was a dramatic show of support for victims who can be both male and female as the nation pauses to look closer at this issue. It's important that people understand if you're a victim that you don't have to continue to be victimized. If you know someone who's a victim of domestic violence, that you take the initiative to help that individual get them to a shelter, get them to a counselor, get them to a law enforcement official that can do something about it. The way to break the cycle of domestic violence is for all of us to get involved. I am a survivor of domestic violence and I was quite young when it happened to me. I, I wasn't even 22 years old and so as a teen mom, you know, and this was something I didn't know how to deal with. Um, I was happy to have the support system from my mom, but I still was ashamed to let her know. I blamed myself. I thought it was my fault that this was happening to me. And I don't want any person out there, men or women, who's suffering from domestic violence to think that this is their fault, to think that they cannot speak out because they're going to be shamed. New York City Councilwoman Annabelle Palma shared that domestic violence can impact anyone, saying that in her 20s she felt alone with no one to turn to, despite family members that said they would have supported her. But sometimes more than family is needed, as in the case of Diamond Dunn. She says her mother was shot by the father of her child. He was arrested and recently sentenced. I struggle every day. I take depression medications. I'm in therapy. Um, I'm trying to raise the little girl whom I had the baby from the abuser. 
Um, it's hard. It's difficult. It's not easy. But with prayer and support, I feel like I can beat this. Can't beat me. With around 800 domestic violence related calls coming into the New York City Police Department each day with 20 to 24 percent of those cases intimate partner related, the concern is is that there are more. Founder and organizer of the walk, former state assemblywoman Naomi Rivera, says that she hopes that with events like this one, more are encouraged to come forward. They're not alone, and we hear this because it's true. And I think that we're hearing more and more reportings, not because it's happening more, but because people have the courage um, and not, are not as ashamed to speak out. They're walking through several neighborhoods here in the Hostos community, and their message is domestic violence is unacceptable, and for those who are suffering, there's now help. For BronxNet, this is Arlene Makoko. And thank you, Arlene. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with much more. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. There is no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away. But making sure your child is in the right seat is just one of the steps down the road to safer travels. I don't know how it works. Find the right seat for your little one's age and size. We saw what you told us. There's no better way to get home safely. Know for sure that your child is in the right seat. Get all the facts at safercar.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. And we're out. You got plans? You bet. Fifty million Americans struggle with hunger, but we can do something about it. Excuse me. What's going on? Dinner. Please join me in helping put food on their tables. Together, we can feed America. You guys keep going. I'm going to get the plates. Plates? Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger. Barry, time is running out. According to my calculations, one in five kids in America struggles with hunger. How can so many children face hunger when there's more than enough food to feed them all? You're right, Barry. We can help solve hunger by teaming up with Feeding America to get food to hungry kids in communities across the country. Help Flint and the Feeding America Network of Food Banks get food to the people who need it in your community. Find your local Feeding America food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son! It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. This is why you took a second job. Why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. Why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. 
From performing all her life on her small school stage to then performing in her in musical theaters, her journey is nowhere near to the end. Join us today to tell of all about her musical experience is Abby Jaros. Welcome, welcome. Hi, thank you. So to start off, how do you get involved with singing and dancing and acting? Well, at age five, I started dancing. Uh, mm -hmm. My grandmother put me into classes. And um, from there, I kept dancing recre recreationally through uh, my freshman year in high school. Mm -hmm. And I did my first musical. That's when I was exposed to acting and singing as well. I caught the bug with it mm -hmm. and um, ran with it. It's, it was still a recreational thing yeah. uh, up until my senior year in high school. Then I decided that I was going to pursue this. And so I auditioned for schools. and ended up at the University of Central Florida. Oh, wow. How yeah. do your family feel? Because if your grandma pushed you, what did your parents think about it and stuff? Um, they were always so supportive. I mean, any performance that I had, they were always there uh, in the front row, of course. <laughs> um, but also, we had decided mutually that it was not something that I was going to pursue up until my junior year in high school. and. Um, I went to the Broadway Theater Project, mm -hmm. and you know, through that training and, and a lot of the classes that they took, we all decided that this was something that I can pursue, and that they would back me 100%. And they've been so supportive since then. That's great. Yeah. Is there someone famous that has inspired you, or just someone you know within your circle of like people that somehow has inspired you? Somewhere? Absolutely. Uh, so I actually just saw her last night at Carnegie Hall, Cheetah Rivera. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, through the years, just watched all of her work. I've done a lot of uh, studying on her. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, of course, there's inspirations outside of the business, like my family and my grandmother. Um, so, yeah, those are a few of my inspirations. That's great. Yeah. What exactly was it? Because you said it was during high school. Why you? It was more of like a recreation. But what exactly was it that made you think this is the career for me? Yeah, it was always something that I deep down knew that I oh, I'm touch it. that <laughs> I um, that I knew that I uh, wanted to pursue. Um, you know, what was more sound with you know, wh where my life could go, you know, financially would be, of course, something that was not in acting and a, a more steady job would yeah. be. I wanted to pursue marine biology, but oh, wow. um, yeah, I, it was just something, I went to the Broadway Theater Project and I was, out of the 200 students, I was chosen as the recipient of the Gregory Hines Scholarship. That's amazing. And yeah, Good thank you. Help. And um, yeah, that was a really proud moment in my life. And, and that was when my parents mm -hmm. were like, okay, maybe there's something here. And so went out on a limb and here we are. <laughs> and now at this point of life, what have been some of the plays that you've been a part of? Uh, since... Well, since I've, I, I worked a lot of summer stock in college, which mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. I've worked in Indiana at Holiday World, mm -hmm. um, also in New Hampshire at the Paper Mill Playhouse, Jean's Playhouse. Mm -hmm. And um, so since I've graduated, I worked at uh, Merry-Go-Round up in Auburn, New York. Mm -hmm. I did West Side Story there, as oh, well wow. as the regional premiere of Saturday Night Fever. That's cool. Yeah, it was, was great. Cool. I love that area. It was a great company. And... Um, also, I just got off of the national and the international tour of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. We were talking a little off air about performing in Japan and mm -hmm. performing the play in Japan. Can you tell like the audience a little bit more about what was that like? Yeah, it was um, it was an incredible experience. It changed my life. I uh, we were there for two weeks, and so we had only one day off, so we were fully immersed in the theater scene there. And, mm -hmm. you know, at the, we did the show completely in English, and on the sides they had subtitles yeah, in yeah. Japanese, which was really cool. But it was such, it, their culture there is is so inspiring, yeah, and, yeah. and I was in awe every day, you know, just walking around. It's, it's such a different world, but totally. it was really awesome. It's like a whole different side of the world, so I would yeah. assume that things, will, the culture itself will be different. How do you prepare for auditions, and how do you deal with that if an audition doesn't go well and stuff like that? Uh, to prepare, I mean, y you're constantly, as an artist, going to classes and going to voice lessons mm -hmm. and, and training, and that's the best way to prepare for auditions. But, um, you know, if, if an audition doesn't go as well, and that happens, <laughs> yeah. um, you, you just have to sit back afterwards and say, okay, what went wrong? 
what can I do better for next time? And you have to move on. Totally, totally. What would you say is the moment in your career that has made you the most proud? Um, I think it was recently in, in, in a few auditions that I've been a part of. And, and I ended up in places that, you know, because of my work ethic and how hard I've worked since I've moved to New York City, which wasn't too long ago, mm -hmm. um, I've ended up in these rooms that I could only dream of being in, you know, when I was back in college in mm -hmm. December of 2014, and you know. Um, so that has been a really proud moment for me, just knowing that all of the work and the long hours yeah. and, you know, you know, the heartbreak that you go through with being an actress, but also all of the awesome experiences that I've gone through. Yeah, um, and I bet that's from Florida to being here in New York, I bet like the change is big, not only like in probably in your personal life, but also with the actors that you surround yourself with. Absolutely. I mean, you know, everybody that I've worked with throughout the line has, has always been, the, everybody's been so talented, mm -hmm. but it is such a different caliber up here. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it you are definitely more immersed with a bigger group of people. And more know. competition, I Yes, bet. more competition, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that has been a big difference. What are your aspirations for the future of your career? What do you see your career going? What are some of the uh, possible roles that you will want to play in the future? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I have a bucket list. I like to call <laughs> it my theater bucket list or my performing bucket list. I, you know, it ranges from wanting to be in a music video to mm -hmm. wanting to be a, eventually a lead on Broadway sometime in my life. And um, That'll be good. <laughs> That'll be amazing. <laughs> it would be amazing. So, you know, I mean, I, 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 like, I don't like to stop anywhere. I, I'm really into TV. And I'm starting to get into TV and film more and, oh, and studying that. And, um I've, I love singing and acting and, and, you know, dance has always been my life, so I love mm -hmm. to expand from there. Totally. What are some upcoming events that you might have or upcoming uh, plays that you may be a part of that you want to let people know? Um, as of now, it's nothing that I can speak of just because oh. it's on contract. But, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been in a lot of finals for a lot of upcoming things. I don't have anything coming up. The biggest thing was that I just got off the Joseph tour, so I'm yeah. still... You know, um, right now it's the process for the next of thing. yeah, yeah, now is that. yeah. Okay. which is you know a lot of a lot of our lives. Yeah, actors, definitely. So. The anticipation is there. Yep, it um, is. <laughs> quickly before we go, where can people find out more about you and your career? Um, on my website, which is mm -hmm. abbyaros.com, a b b y j a r o s dot com, mm -hmm. and um, also on social media at abbyaros.com or at abbyaros. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us on set today. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank our guests for being part of today's show and the viewers for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's show, you can watch it anytime on bronxnet.org. This is Lisa Dominguez. Until next time.